Okay, so we're going to start with something as simple as possible to try to get the concept across to you what a slope field is. And uh, so, first of all, it's something simple we could actually solve, and we will take the time to solve it so you can connect what a slope field is compared to the solution for a differential equation. So here, um, if I was to solve this one, hopefully uh, it's something that you find easy to do. Um, split the variables, and I end up with y equals x plus some constant. Okay, so fairly simple as far as the differential equations go. But uh, some differential equations, I shouldn't say some, there are plenty of differential equations that are very difficult or maybe not possible to solve, just like I showed you some integrals which we can't integrate. Um, so this is another method that uh, we have if we cannot work so well with the slope field, or sorry, with the uh, differential equation. So here we're going to create a slope field, and basically what this says here is it says the change according to y is equal to 1 at every place. So that means anywhere I go, there's going to be a slope of 1. So that's what I'm going to draw on my graph. Um, you know, I'm going to go around and put slope of 1 onto this picture. And what I'm going to end up with, it's a really bizarre looking graph. That's why we call it a field. Um, because it's not one particular graph, it's supposed to kind of show you what's happening to that derivative at all these points on my graph. So, you know, there's a bunch of points there. We could put many, many more on, but for now, basically this shows me that no matter where I am in this field, the uh, change is 1, the slope is 1. Okay? And um, you'll notice that when you do your AP exams, they specifically put dots. So there'll be a dot like right here and you'll put the slope field through the dots that you're given. So don't worry about how many should I put on for full marks and things like that. It'll be clear on the exam. So <clears throat> this slope field, you know, at first sight you kind of look at it and you say, well, what, you know, that doesn't really tell me anything about this graph, or you might not see it, but it tells me how the graph is changing. So the original graph is changing um, with this kind of an angle, going up at, uh, by positive 1. So I'm going to show you here... If the initial condition was 0, 1, okay, that means we're talking about the point 0, 1. So let's mark that. This is one of the initial conditions, um, x equals 0, y equals 1. And I'm going to follow the slope field now to get an idea of the picture. So if I think about it, my slope field is telling me that everywhere through here, I'm going to move by po like a uh, slope of positive 1. So that means I'm going to end up doing this if I follow the direction of the slope field through that point. Okay? And if you think about it, that's one of the solutions, a particular solution to this general one. This is the line y equals x plus 1, or my best artistic rendition of it. But the slope field is what directed me through there, how to draw what the uh, solution looks like. So if we wanted to actually solve and verify what the particular solution is, then what we would do is we would take this and our point 0, 1. So that means my constant equals 1. The particular solution, x plus 1, that's what I got when I followed the direction of the slope field. Okay, so the slope field can give us a visual representation for how this differential equation would look if we solved it. Okay, and again, the biggest application is for graphs where we can't do the derivative, or antiderivative, sorry. We will, um, for the most part today, just to try and get this connection in our, in our head, we're going to try to stick with graphs that we can take the antiderivative so we can compare them. Are there any questions about this? Don't be shy. Not going to be that many people on YouTube watching it. <laughs> Stephanie Ting, yeah, that'll be the, that's the joke now. Somewhere in there, it'll be like, "Where's Waldo?" Everybody will be waiting to see when someone yells up. <laughs> you might make it viral. It might be like a viral video someday. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to take a look at three uh, uh, x squared as the slope field. So this time it's it's different than what we started with, and the idea is the same, though. We can gather some data if I said, um, here's the value for x, and let's take the value of the slope. So I can make a little table. 
And for example, if I put in the value x equals 0, the slope is equal to 0. At x equals to 2, uh, the slope is equal to 12. At x equals 4, the slope is equal to 48. And I'll do some more points here too. I'm running out of room, so I'll have to put it beside. But uh, I can also do this at negative 2, it's going to be 12. And at negative 4, it'll also be 48. So that tells me the slope for these coordinates here. So for the values of x, um, I'm going to move along and draw those slopes. So at 0, the slope is 0. So everywhere that x equals 0, the slope field equals 0, too. So you don't need to, uh, probably made a bad decision to make that many tick marks. But anyways, um, you can space them out a bit more. You'll notice that I, I separated them by about two spaces here, 0, 2, 4. You know, the more accurate of a picture you want, the closer you're going to have to keep your points together to show you the slope field. Um, but again, at some point, you're just going to beg for a computer because you don't want to do it by hand. But uh, at 2, it says the slope is 12. So everywhere along this line here where x equals to 2, that means I'm going to have a fairly steep graph. So uh, let's say that it's something like this. And I'll space this one out a bit more. And same thing at negative 2, it's the same value for the slopes. So I'm going to have a, a fairly steep graph, fairly steep graph. Okay. And even steeper yet, when I get to negative 4, it's going to be positive 48. So it's going to almost appear vertical in mine. And again, you know, I haven't taken the time to measure out exactly if these are positive 12, but it's going to give me the approximation I need. The accuracies that uh, you want your answer will obviously depend on how much accuracy you put into your, your work here. But at 4, it's going to appear near vertical. Oh, sorry, yes, thank you. Uh, it'll be at 4. So it's going to appear near vertical in my picture. And same thing on this side here. It's going to appear near vertical at 4. Now, if we look at the particular solution we've been given here, this is the point 1, 1. So let's pencil that in. 1, 1 will be here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and move through this graph the way the slope is directing me. And if I do that, that means if I think about, you know, somewhere here, the slope is probably something like this. We could calculate it um, at 1. Uh, at 1, it's going to be equal to 3. So yeah, that's probably what a slope of 3 looks like. So that's the angle I'm going to start my problem. And I know that as I connect, I'm going to have to become flat here. So I'm going to have to decrease how fast I'm dropping so that the slope ends up flattening out here. And then even though it's flat there, it gets steep quite quickly here. So I'm going to end up quickly dropping off. And same thing here, it gets steep on the other side of this point, so it's going to quickly end up rising. And I'm trying to match the slope is what I'm doing, following the slope along. So maybe I'll trace over it in black so it's easier to see with all that slope field drawn onto it. So this would be about my approximation, the line in black. And of course, this is an equation that we can actually solve. So we could solve this as dy equals... 3x squared dx. So again, it's, it's an, another easy antiderivative. If you look at the picture we've drawn, I'm not sure if you recognize the cubic graph, but this is the graph of x cubed. And you can probably already tell me what the constant is going to be. Uh, you can probably take a guess. What do you think that constant is going to be? Yeah, it's going to be a 0. And again, <coughs> If you can't see it from the picture, that constant, it's the graph hasn't moved, it's right there in the center, um, we can solve for it. So I can put that point in, 1 equals 1 plus c, so c equals to 0. The particular solution would be y equals x cubed, and if you look at y equals x cubed on your graphing calculator, that's approximately what I've got 